Hey everyone, I'm Adam, and this is The New Woodworker. So thanks for joining me for another episode. I've actually received a question quite a few times now that I've neglected, and I apologize for that. But ever since this video came out, um, I've gotten a lot of, of inquiries about paint, about painting, and about, most specifically, what kind of paints I use. I've been a general contractor for a very long time. My grandfather was a builder, my other grandfather was a woodworker. So I grew up around those two men and learning those trades. Now painting's an interesting part of general contracting because it seems easy, but yet why do we have so many problems with it, right? Now there are specific things that make painting easier, that make painting last longer, that make painting look better, that, that get the process going in a way that's not so complicated. And I'm going to tell you what some of those things are today, so stay tuned. Oh, I just found out we don't have commercial breaks, so here we are. <laughs> now, as you saw in that cabinet painting video, I use Sherwin-Williams trim enamels on cabinets. It's tough as nails, it holds up really well, it goes on well, and it sprays pretty well out of the sprayers. But I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really like Sherwin-Williams wall paints, nor their ceiling paints. Now when you're flipping houses, you really need to pay attention to your costs, right? So a lot of times we're tempted to use cheap paints. Well, Home Depot bare paints used to be cheap paints, and I mean years ago. But now, Home Depot bare paints are actually my favorites. Now I've used just about every wall paint available. I've been through the gamut. And here is my favorite paint. The Bear Marquee One Coat. This paint, guys and gals, is really, really great. Now I'm sure some of you are already saying, oh, he's not a professional. He uses bare paint, so you gotta use ben Benjamin Moore and Sherwin Williams. Huh. That may be what many people think, but that's not true. Now I've been using this bare marquee one coat coverage for a few years now. And I'm going to show you why. But first I want you to see the tools that I use to get a good coat. Now one of the most important things that you use is your nap. This is a nap. It's not a roller, it's a nap. This is a roller cover essentially. I use Purdy 3 8 inch naps. These are all I use. I won't use any others. I don't like any others. I, I actually despise most of the other naps. These are my favorites. Now we're going along with the Purdy products. I also prefer their, uh, these uh, four inch rollers. I, I like these a lot. They're just stiff enough. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot to say about them. They work well. But for the four inch rollers, I actually prefer the Wooster Pro 3 8 inch nap for a four inch roller, these. Now you're going to be tempted to buy the cheap rollers at Home Depot or Lowe's. Don't buy them because there's too much flex in the bar. The roller will slide off very frequently. The bar will bend. The handle will break. It will crack. Um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons not to. So try to buy the good ones. Now I prefer these little Sherlock poles. They have a positive click, positive lock. Cutting in is definitely a task. So my favorite cutting in brush is actually a two inch angled purdy, okay? Now this is the Pro uh, Extra Glide, that's what it's called. This is the Pro Extra Glide. But I'm also okay with having the thinner brush, this two inch, uh, this one's called something, what's it called again? Now this is the XL Dale, okay? These are my favorite cut in brushes. As long as it's a two inch angle, sometimes I like it a little thicker, sometimes I like it a little thinner. Now these are basically the only brushes I like to cut in with. I'll cut in with something else if I have to, but I always keep these on hand and I always buy extras. That's how much I like them. Now, to the specifics of the paint. Why do I like Bear Marquee One Coat coverage so much? Well, let's show you. This wall behind me is a new construction wall. I'm standing in a master bathroom addition that we're building off this master bed. So we're creating a master suite. This is a new wall that we just built, put up, and rocked, meaning it's done. It's got sheetrock, it's got spackle, it's been sanded. Now, so you can see that this is the first coat of paint going on. And I actually forgot to get the camera and start recording for you until I got halfway done with the wall. So I'm gonna show you why I like this paint so much. Now, the other thing is, I want you to see my method. As I mentioned, I've been painting for a long time. I have a method that works very well for me. And it's what I teach my guys, I teach my kids, I teach my family, I teach my friends. This is the way I teach people to paint. Here we go. 
Now these are not my favorite roller pans, but it's what I had because my guys have the other pans with them. So let's say this is a new roller. You want to load your roller with paint, right? That means you're going to bring some paint up and you're just going to get it all over the roller. But as you bring the paint up, you also don't want to sit there wiping it all off, okay? So now we've got a loaded roller. So my method for painting can be done in two ways. You can either just go the top section of a wall or you can go top, bottom, top, bottom. But you're basically splitting the wall into two. Now, sometimes, depending on the space, depending on the situation, I will just paint top to bottom, okay? Now, especially if it's a one coat, we're only doing one coat in a certain place. A lot of the times, I will just go top to bottom, and I'll just do about two rows, two passes per load, if you will, okay? All right, so as you can see, I've already done the top half. So if I'm just going to do the bottom half, I'm going to start on the outside. I'm going to do a V. And then I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to go and fill the space where I was. Now I'm going to get back to where I started, and I've got some extra paint here. So now I go back down. Because it's one coat coverage, I'm filling in all the areas that did not catch a lot of paint. Okay, I'm not pushing hard. Here's one of the things. The harder you push, the more paint you take off. If you're not pushing hard, you can go over a section a couple times and it doesn't take the paint off. Look for boogers, get the booger out, and touch that place up. So that's one coat right there. And that one coat is solid enough where I'm not going to have to do it again. This is all just one coat as well, guys and gals, if you will. It's still drying, so you can see a little bit of lines up there. Now, unfortunately, this is a tight area. I don't have a lot of room to work because we can't move anything out of here. Now, if I were just doing single passes, this is what I would do. I would load my paint onto my roller. I would start just outside my line, come down, up. Nice even pressure on the roller. And that's one coat covered. And that is about three passes there. Okay? Again, get your booger out, and that's it. So again, um, we've got about two, two rollers there. We've got two sections there, and that's done. So I can keep going that way, top to bottom, or I can do halves. So let me show you halves now. And you know what, before I go any further, let me just tell you guys and gals, there's not one way to paint. Let's be clear. And there's a lot of contractors out there that have their own way, and it may work for them or their process or their workflow, and it may not work for you. This is what works for me, and I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I've never had a problem. Now, Bear Marquee, this goes on smoothly. It's a little thicker of a paint. It goes on like a gel coat. It goes on smoothly. It's not too thick. Now I will point out, the only time I ever had a problem was when there was too much humidity in the air. I didn't even think that there was too much humidity, but it turns out there was, and the paint, once it was on, you could just peel it off. And I mean, it peeled off. But that's also a testament to show you that the marquee paint is, is a very complete gel coat. It just covers the whole thing, which is why if you start peeling it, the whole thing will peel off. All right, so can you see me over here? I believe you can. Now, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start outside. I'm gonna create my V and then come back down. Now this allows me to move pretty quickly. And I'm being very careful up at the ceiling because I've already painted this ceiling and I don't want to paint it again. Now there we go. So that is my top. I'm going to load my paint again. And I'm going to do the bottom. My V, go down, back up, fill in. And remember, where you apply your pressure, is very important and that's how you avoid getting the lines and the streaks in your coat. Done. Okay? Now this video is going to be pretty short, but my point is 
Bear Marquee One Coat Coverage is actually a, a really good paint, and it's what I prefer to use nowadays. And also, I wanted to answer the few questions that have been building about the same thing, and I've been neglecting. Sorry, guys. And gals, I think a, I think a young lady asked me as well. Now, if you can't tell, I'm in my paint clothes. I'm in my bum clothes, okay? Actually, most of my work clothes seem like bum clothes, but all right. So here we go. We've got a loaded roller. And I'm just going to wrap up this, this upper half here. You're not pushing too hard. You can go over it again and you're not removing any paint. Now remember, if you're sitting there pushing against the wall so hard that your roller's bending, you're going to get an uneven coat. It's not going to look good, and that's where you get streaks on the ends, and that's where you get uneven paint going onto the wall. You don't have to push hard. I see so many people like getting close to it and pushing so hard, and it's like, it's, you're not getting, you know, you don't have to do that. Finesse, guys, finesse. All right. All right, so here we go. Let's wrap this wall up real quick. I don't have a lot of room behind me, so I can't really move. We've got to finish the trim here so I don't have to worry about that. Got a booger. Get your boogers. Make sure you go over your wall and get your boogers. Oh, don't pick up a booger. Okay, so that trim is going there. Done. There it is. That wall is done. So that wraps it up, guys and gals. I hope this video was informative and helpful. Hopefully it'll help your painting process go a little smoother next time. So thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button so that it can propel us further into the YouTube algorithm. Oh, and tap that bell so that you can receive notifications anytime I release a new video. I'm Adam, and this is The New Woodworker.